My name is Christian Landeros. My name is Anthony Curtis. Oh, my name is Alexis Santillan, and we will be introducing the artificial arts to future biomedical engineers and potentially develop or add on to the research. As the population continues to increase, there's also been an increase in cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular disease and specifically heart failure is the number one cause of death in the men and women across every demographic. We can clearly see that the images on the left, there's nearly 6,000 heart transplants performed annually, yet there's one mil request worldwide. Since cardiovascular disease is occurring more frequently, biomedical engineers have rigorously tried to figure out how to replace the heart by using biomaterials that can prevent deaths worldwide. The most common artificial organ that biomedical engineers have been focused on for the past decade is the artificial heart. The artificial heart has been gaining momentum in the medical scene and been an upward trend throughout the years. Considering that we have the technology to make devices such as the artificial heart potentially last for decades, currently the artificial heart is known as a SYN cardiac device and it's the first world temporary device to replace the heart. The total artificial heart is a device that has been used for the most severe cardiac dysfunction that allows to save patients from their death and allows them to continue their regular lives. The last century, the experiments held. In 1937, Dr. Vladimir P. Demikov developed the total artificial heart, TAH, device and mainly experimented transplants on dogs. In 1969, Dr. Co Denton Cooley executed the first TAH transplantation in a human. The first successful permanent artificial heart is called the Jarvik 7. This permanent artificial heart was implanted in a patient for the first time in 1982. Doctors and engineers over the last century have made significant advances and held countless experiments to create the artificial heart. Up until now, the artificial heart created has been without fault. Given the advancements made over the last century, doctors may be able to completely sustain life through an artificial heart since they are improving each time. The total artificial heart is a bomb material that consists of flexible silicone and it's a mechanical surgical support that replaces a patient's native ventriculars and all cardiac valves. These valves are connected to the total artificial heart of your heart's arterium and all major arteries. Once the total artificial heart is transferred into the human body, the artificial organ proceeds to act as a healthy heart, allowing the blood flow through the body. Implantation in the artificial heart involves in cutting the failing heart, as shown in the image on the left. Then the biocapacity interface is entered in the oracles and the device as seen in the red arrows. Next, we can see that the biocapacity interface binds with the two mechanical valves as seen in the orange arrows. The image displayed on the left is the Jarvac 7 and is the most recent total artificial heart. The Jarvac 7 showcases that each ventricular has two mechanical valves an inward flow and an outward valve. These valves control the direction of the blood flow in and out of the ventricular. Inside each ventricular is a flexible balloon-like membrane known as a diamagnetic frame. The diamagnetic divides the ventricular in two chambers, the blood chamber which holds the blood and enters the ventricular and the air chamber. We have a quick detailed video that showcases a major function of the total artificial heart and other important info. Membrane. The left membrane for the blood is made of cow heart tissue and is treated to avoid the body rejecting it. The other, for the actioning fluid in motor pumps, is made of polyurethane. The heartbeat is produced in a two-phase process. The two motor pump units alternatively displace the actioning fluid contained in a flexible external bag. When the hydraulic compartment empties, the withdrawal of the biomembrane sucks blood into the ventricle. When it fills up, the biomembrane pumps blood into the arteries. Biological admission and ejection valves ensure the blood only flows in one direction. After the sexual implant, we can see that the patient on the left has a total artificial heart. We can see that there's two running through his stomach that connects to the total artificial heart to a machine called a driver that sits outside of his body. Every patient must use a portable driver that should fit in the shoulder or backpack that allows the artificial heart to keep function and keep pumping at a steady rhythm. Up next, we have the current challenges with the heart. So, some complications that may occur can be first, bleeding. Bleeding can happen after surgery has happened and was not done properly. Also, we have um, an infection. Um, if there's infection, the device was not sterilized properly before the surgery, which led to the infection. Then, another possible 
organ um, can be organ failure. So this can happen if the body does not accept the artificial heart as its own. Next would be blood clots that are common to form after surgery and to be monitored. And lastly would be strokes. And strokes can happen when your blood supply is being blocked to your brain or when a blood vessel burst. The first one would be the potential solutions to improve functionality of the artificial heart. The first potential solution would be a welded titanium shell with hermetic connectors. The titanium shell allows this device to be stronger and last more, giving it a more durable material. And with the hermetic connectors, they interconnect glass to metal sealing technology inside the device. Up next, with a 9-cell 800-MAHR NICD battery pack, this allows for the recharging time to be reduced by 10 hours as seen from 14 hours to 44 hours as listed in the bullet point below. Then we have the new motor with integrated position sensors allowing the artificial heart to pump blood better and the compliance chamber fittings to provide corrosion resistance. Society Code of Ethics the biomedical engineer is obligated to enhance the health and welfare of the public while still being aware of the cost consequences. In the case of artificial hearts, it seems ethically responsible to hold the integrity of the device's function as a top priority. Cost can only be taken into consideration after the safety and effectiveness of the device is ensured. Overall, this concludes our presentation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys continue on to the research of the artificial heart.